In this video, I'm going to show you how you can make a Linux application using GTK4 that follows the live waiter guidelines and style. From making the interface and backend to making your application's icon. To support the channel, you can like, subscribe, donate, or leave a comment. I always hold them. Thank you. So I proposed this video back when I made the history of GNOME. A lot of people wanted a video tutorial on this and I find that it is a good way of contributing to Linux, even if at a small scale. Today we're going to start by making a very simple demo rock paper scissors game in C. GTK, originally called the GIMP Toolkit, is a library part of glib that allows us to make graphical interfaces and interact with them. Widgets like buttons, labels, and grids. Our app is going to be made for Linux, but GTK can also allow you to make apps for Windows, BSDs, and Mac OS. Examples of GTK applications are GIMP, also uses GTK but is getting ported to GTK3, Inkscape is made with GTK3, in the process of being ported to GTK4. Most GNOME applications have been ported to GTK4, which gives them a performance boost due to hardware acceleration. But if you notice, these applications don't look that similar. That is because even if they use the same toolkit, GTK can be themed with CSS to create custom styles and widgets, like we're going to try today. That is why Livet Waito was created. It is a library that uses GTK and creates its own style and widgets to let you make apps that look very similar and that can be adapted to different input methods and screen sizes. If you make a Live at Waiter application following the guidelines, it will run on Linux phones, tablets, laptops, and desktops. Live at Waiter already includes its default at Waiter theme. So that's why there is a controversy with these apps as they are harder to theme. But as I've already mentioned, the developer can theme Leva Oida and extend it with CSS. Examples of this are colored buttons, different color palettes, and Embril, a very pretty Leva Oida app that uses CSS to blur the interface. The Gnome Circle initiative was created to have an ecosystem of free software that follows the guidelines of Libertweta provides a lot of benefits, so if you're planning on making an app like this, consider joining the circle. I'm running Fedora 38 with the latest GNOME 44, so I have like the background apps and the cater and that stuff. It doesn't really matter the distro that you're using, but preferably it has to use GNOME. I mean, otherwise you won't be able to try some features, but that's it. In terms of programs that we're gonna use, we need GNOME Builder. GNOME Builder is an IDE for GTK apps. It is going to help us to make our backend and our frontend and also to generate a flat pack. One flaw that GNOME Builder has is that it doesn't display live previews of your interfaces. So for that, we have Workbench. Workbench is an application that lets you prototype and see in real time, in most cases, how your interface is going to look with the latest live waiter guidelines and everything. It also has some pretty interesting and useful demo apps that we're gonna use today. Contrast allows you to check two colors and compare them to see if they work together. That is very useful when trying to add colors to your application or to your app icon. Icon library is a collection of GTK icons that is very, very useful. We're gonna use it today again as well uh, to make our application icon and also to add custom icons. For the application icon, I recommend you to use App Icon Preview. It displays your icon at different sizes and in different backgrounds. And we're not gonna use this one, but still I recommend it. It's called Elastic. This is an application that lets you create spring animations for your Live Waita app. It is very useful. Let's start by creating a new project. This project name is going to be called Dual. There are a lot of Live Waita matrix channels and people in there 
a user called Barge helped me to pick this name. You have to choose an application ID. Um, for example, you can pick com.bytesof.dual. You can choose the location of your project. By default, it is in home project. There are multiple languages supported, but I'm going to be honest. At least in my personal experience, I've found that C is the best supported language because obviously GTK is written in C, so you don't need a binding or language server for that. You get the latest updates to GTK and Levitwaita, and I've gotten some really weird errors with other languages. Also, we're gonna use C because I made a poll in Mastodon and, well, that's what people wanted. But you can pick any that you want. Gnome Builder will make sure to install all the dependencies that it needs. Other languages that I recommend are Rust. Like, aside from C, Rust is probably the best supported language. It is really fast and a lot of people really like Rust. Then I would recommend you to use Vala. Vala is kind of like Gnome's own programming language that it resembles a lot Java and syntax. Uh, but in the end, it ends up generating C code, so it is not that slow. Remember that C does not have classes, so if that is kind of a deal breaker for you, you can choose Vala that does have classes and inheritance and more complex features. The language that you pick will also affect the documentation that you'll have to read. For example, the default GTK and Levitwaita docs all use C by default. So if you want to look for the syntax in other languages for the Vala docs or the Rust docs, in some cases you do get like a box with different languages, but in most cases, like when you look into specific properties of something in the docs, you need to use like the language documentation. The license can be any open source license that you want. You can also make your app proprietary, but that's an insult to everyone. So in my opinion, I think the GPL is the best license. In short, it makes it so that your project is always kept open source because if you chose like a permissive license like Apache, then everyone can just take your code and make it proprietary and profit off of that. <laughs> so yeah, choose the GPL, come on. This toggle is for the Git version control. In most cases, you do want that. And you can also choose a template. We're just gonna choose GNOME application. Sometimes the Flatpak build is not initialized, so you will get this error, just build it again, and it will work just fine. First of all, we're gonna change the layout. Well, you've already seen how the app will turn out, but basically we have a home page that gives you the options of whatever you want to choose, you know, rock, paper, or scissors. And then when you choose something, it will bring you to the results page and it will tell you if you won or if you lost. That is basically how the app is. It's pretty simple, but I think it works perfectly for what we're going to do today. Like in a lot of programming, you have the front end and the back end. The front end is basically the graphical user interface, and the back end is like the logic of your program. Dodge UI files are, in most cases, XML files that declare a user interface. It can be a custom widget, it can be a, like a window, it can be whatever you want. This is called a widget template, and a widget template can be reused. So if we take a look at the structure of this file, you will see that first we have, well, XML. We declare an interface, the libraries it requires. We declare that it is a template and what it extends. It extends by default in that way that application window, but it could also be like a button or like a box or whatever you want. We execute the app and something very cool that GNOME has is this always on top option. And I'm going to show you something else. It's called the 
GTK inspector. So you can press Ctrl Shift I and this will bring up the GTK inspector. It is kind of like a web inspector. It shows you the structure of an interface and the properties of any element. And in fact, this is a dual window. We have a GTK box here that has the header bar and the GTK label. So basically, we just have a box here and vertical orientation, that's it. Inside of the header bar, we have, well, the window handle, the title, and this menu button. If we go here to this menu button, you will notice that these are the options declared in this menu. And then if we go here to the header bar, menu model, is exactly this one. So if you want to change that, now you know that you just have to change this menu. This is how Workbench looks. And again, it gives you a live preview. You don't really have to use it, but I recommend using it because of this. If you go to the menu, Platform Tools, and at Weta Demo, we will have an Aweda demo application that will show us the guidelines and how every live Aweda widget works. This is what is called an Aweda status page. It's exactly the same widget that we have here. The structure is an icon, a title, a description, and also it can have children widgets. So icon, title, description. So there are a lot of other widgets. We're going to see them all very quickly. Um, you have leaflets. A leaflet is basically what we have here. A leaflet is a widget that can show its children, but depending on the available space, like it says here. So right now it is showing both of its children this side panel and the content. But if we make it small enough, it will become like a page, you know? So we can go back and we can go forward like a page. And if we make it big again, it's gonna be like this. You can change the transition and a lot of stuff. You can also make it so that it always shows like in this page mode, that's what we're gonna use. And at Weta Leaflet, that's always going to show only one of its children. We also are going to use an Athweta clamp. This is very simple to understand. If we didn't have the Athweta clamp, these boxes would be as large as possible. But an Athweta clamp just limits the maximum width of a widget. Right now, the maximum width it's of 600 but we can make it larger here or smaller because if it was really that wide this looks kind of weird but if we say like 600 then this is not that weird we also have lists a list is a collection of rows and this is a row an element from a list that can have a title subtitle a widget you know they can also be editable you can also attach radio buttons to them and other suffix and prefix widgets to them they can also be like this combo row these are mainly for forms for example a context app you know this is how a context app would work or they're also very useful if you're going to change the preferences of one application for example change the behavior of the app from this to this or this it's very useful but we're not gonna use it today we also have view switchers that is mainly for tabs and that sort of stuff carousels that show you a lot of information. You see a lot of this in mobile, mainly. We have a way to flap that is basically what in Android would be like a drawer. It's this. If it becomes too small, it shows it like this. We also have the tab view. You can move tabs, duplicate them, change the icon, close all other tabs, see them in this 
tab overview that is actually a new widget, you see this in GNOME web and in GNOME console. This, there's also a tab button, but it is not used here. You also have multiple types of buttons. In this case, these are split buttons, mainly for opening files and with some other options. And this is something that we are going to use. Styles. Styles are made with CSS, but there are some predefined styles. For example, flat, suggested action, or destructive. This is a regular button. This is a flat button. You know, it's kind of transparent, but when you hover over it, it shows a slight background. Suggested action, in theory, it's the same color as your accent color because we don't have like custom accent colors for now that will probably arrive in GNOME 45 destructive that is a red button and these are custom CSS buttons these are kind of like more transparent and these are opaque that's how the name is called you also have pill buttons circular buttons you can theme basically whatever you want for example, you have here custom entries, linked controls, there are these that label styles and you can have cards and a lot of stuff. What we're gonna do today is, well, first of all, I really like the flat header bar. It doesn't work always, but for what we're gonna do, for example, if we bring up Warp, that is a GNOME Circle application, it uses the flat header bar. So that's what we're gonna use. You also have toasts that work like an intro in app notifications you can add actions long titles and that sort of stuff you have animations elastic is exactly for this the about window that can also be summoned in some cases like this and you also have the banner this is an xml format but gnome is working on a newer format called blueprint blueprint is a way cleaner format that has more modern features and everything but it is not stable yet so that's why i'm not showing you how to make this with blueprint when that comes out i will probably show you how to make it with blueprint too so first of all i'm gonna make my window 600 by 600 let's leave the gtk box i'm going to put some spaces between to make it easier to see the only change i'm going to make to this header bar is the flat style so to add a pre-made style like flat what we're gonna do is go here to object like here and declare style class name equals to flat great now instead of this gtk label what we're gonna do is to add an weta leaflet again you can comment this as weta leaflet with control M. To declare a child, you have to use the child tag, then object class equals to, and you have to define the class that you're gonna use for this widget. In this case, it's a waiter status page. You can also define an ID. This is mainly for working with this widget and binding it to the backend. I'm going to call it just leaflet. So if we go to the documentation of Live Waiter, which I recommend you to check, go to the latest version and look for a Waiter leaflet, we have to use this property called can unfold that says well if if it is set to true then it can show multiple children at a time but if it is set to false it can only show one at a time and that's what we're going to use so to declare a property property name the name of the property that is can unfold and the value false in property name we're going to declare another one that is called homogeneous that basically says, well, make all the children the same size. Another property called can navigate back. This is so that when you have a leaflet, for example, here, you can go back 
with a swipe in the touchpad with two fingers or with gesture navigation in phones but also in desktops that have a mouse with a back button like mine you can just press that and it will go back to the previous page so we want that to be true now we have to declare the children of this OIDA status page the children that we want to display as pages so again child object class of the waiter status page and give it an id called home page this is going to be the default page that we're going to show and here add another property called visible child name so basically the default visible child is going to be home page so type the id and this is what is going to be shown by default add some properties here property name icon name and here we have to set an icon let's leave it like this for now property name title i'm just going to put it welcome you can also add a description that is optional let's play rock paper scissors and we can also add custom children here well actually just one child uh, that can have sub children so we want to have like three buttons each one is going to represent one of the three possible options that you can choose you know rock paper and scissors buttons and for now let's leave it like this <laughs> okay i committed some mistake i'm sorry uh i added at waiter status page when the class is actually at waiter leaf lodge and then this is how it looks like uh, it looks a little bit weird you know because we don't have any icon and if you take a look at this let's use the eyedropper it doesn't take the full height it takes the full width but not the full height with this property called v expand v standing for vertical expand so do you want to expand it vertically to take all the space available true like this Looks a little bit weird again because we don't have any icons so for that we're gonna use the icon library. You can use any of these icons but there's a catch. The issue is that most of these icons are not pre-installed with GNOME which means that you have to import them into your app to be able to use them. You can use like a pre-installed system icon let's say this copy the icon name and paste it here and now it will work fine but because it is a system icon it can happen that in i don't know gnome 50 the icon changes and no longer reflects what you wanted i don't know it is removed from the system and now your app is going to be broken so to fix that and to also include any icon that is not pre-installed with the system for example this one you have to include it within the app go here to include it in an app and here icon library gives you some steps to include it in your app you have to save the svg to project your project source and create here an icons folder so we're going to do that i already have a couple of icons that i've made so let's try it with them you can also go here in any of these icons copy the svg and edit them in inkscape for example that is a vectors editor so first of all let's create a new folder call it icons and now let's go to nautilus copy these icons and paste them in our dual source icons folder like this and that's fine but we have to tell our program that we want to include these icons so let's go to the g resource xml file this tells our application all our resources like widget template files or icon files so file preprocess xml strip blanks this is going to remove like the blank spaces and the directory and name of the file the prefix is the jewel folder imagine uh, that it's here we're just going to say icons slash and all of these icons icons slash welcome dot svg and let's do this for all of the icons So here we have our icons and now in theory if we go here to the icon name 
we can just set it to welcome and that should bring up the icon yeah the custom icon that i made it's basically just a gtk icon but with color and that stuff so now let's set the buttons for this we have to declare a child this child is going to be an athoida clamp remember that these are made to limit the width of the children so if we're going to have a vertical box of buttons we need a clamp so that they don't take the whole space and they look really really weird we don't necessarily have to set an id for that just set a property this property is called maximum size and like the name says, we're going to define a maximum width in pixels to limit its children to. So in this case, it's going to be something like 250. Add another comment here, the buttons box. Child, again, object, class, and this is going to be a GTK box. A GTK box is a widget that shows its children next to each other. So it's basically like the equivalent of a linear layout from Android. First of all, let's set the property orientation to vertical that's the most important thing for now and here we can now start to declare the children so child object class gtk button we can give it properties like label and let's say just rock for now and this is how it's going to look like rock we can also add icons to our button, but to do that, you would probably think that you just have to make a GTK box and then a GTK image and use a GTK label and very complex, but Livetweta already gives us an Athweta button content. So if you want to give your button an icon like this exactly, then it is going to be very helpful. So instead of this label property, we have to declare another child here, object class. As you can see, it's pretty repetitive. So that's why they are pushing blueprint as weta button content. And here I forgot to add a comment, rock button. Control M, add the weta button content, and here we have to set the property, name, label. Now we have to set it to rock, another property. Now we can set icon name very easily. And again, remember that we've already imported some custom icons. I'm going to use rock simple to just rock simple, and that's it. Now it's going to have a, an icon next to it. It looks a little bit weird because it's not next to the rock text. So to do that, we have to change the align property. Property name H align. H align stands for horizontal align. So we want to align everything to the center. Just set it center and now it's going to be next to our label that's it for now so let's just copy and paste those basically well yeah i forgot the id set this to rock button id equals to paper button scissors button and again the id let's change the label scissors and let's change their respective icons now let's run it. This is how it looks. And the clamp is working perfectly. They don't look weird. We can just maximize this, make it very small, and I will show automatically a scroll bar. Thanks to Live at Weta, these things are really easy. Now the buttons look a little bit simple, in my opinion. So let's give them a custom style. Let's create a file here in source new file style.css let's create custom styling for our application first of all i'm going to create a css class called rock button set the text and icon color to white set the background color you can use any color that you want but gnome has its own color palette so i recommend you to use that so background color at blue three because this is a pretty fine color that we can just use 
So paper button, it's basically the same thing, just changing the color. White background color at green five. This is just because I like that color. Dodge scissors button color white background color red two. So now we have to add this file to our G resource file file style.css now if you create a dark style css it will automatically detect it and when you switch from light theme to dark theme it will load the corresponding file in this case we've designed this so that it works well on both themes now let's go to our buttons and we have to declare the style that we want to use. So here in the button, not in the Athweta button content, we're going to add a style tag class name pill because I personally like that style. It's this one, pill button. So make make it rounded. It also makes it a little bit bigger. Now that we've defined our custom style, we can just now say rock button. I want something like this instead of this so it's opaque what we want to set it as so add again this other style you can combine multiple ones and this just copy and paste that basically <laughs> rock button change it to paper button change this to scissors button so it should look like this red green blue with white foreground color the final thing we have to do with our layout file is to make the other page remember that we're using an netweta leaflet and we've declared one page this is going to be the default page but we also have to declare another page that is the results page so kind of like here i think i'm going to add another status page and call it results page doesn't really matter the content of this because we're gonna set it via code but i'm going to also add another child of this that is going to be a button for replaying replay button and set again another child of this again add another data button content property name label play again i can name retry i think yes so it, it's not showing anything because that's how it's supposed to be we're going to show that other page in code so now let me introduce you to something called actions an action is basically an event that can be triggered by clicking on a button but also by clicking on this button via the keyboard like selecting it with tab and enter but also can be activated with an accelerator that is basically a keyboard shortcut so if your widgets are going to be activated via keyboard shortcuts it is a good idea to use actions because they are more flexible than just using an activated signal so here let's add another property to these buttons called action name set it to win.rock win.paper win.scissors and also here another one called when dot retry no replay so that's it for our layout file now let's go to the code we have multiple c files for example we have main.c that starts a new instance of our application we have the file for the application itself so an application is basically just an instance like middle clicking on any of these you can have multiple applications that is why sometimes you need to pass an application as a parameter so here in our application.c file let's add accelerators for these actions gtk application 
set axles for action, there are a lot of interesting things that GTK does because remember that C does not have classes, does not have objects, and even some types like strings or booleans. So GTK has to implement kind of an object-oriented programming paradigm in a procedural programming language, which is interesting. So we have to cast our current instance as a GTK application, then give it the name of the action win.rock and let's cast this to an array of characters. And here is where we will actually set the accelerator. So primary is a variable for the control key. You can also set it like control, but if you do that, then you're excluding some weird keyboard layouts, so they have to adapt it to another key. Yeah, most of the times, primary, it's going to be control, and we can just copy and paste this and apply them accordingly to all of our actions. Rock, then here, when the paper, when the scissors, and when the retry. Now the reason why we're setting it to win the something is because if we add the win prefix, it says that that action is going to be attached to the window. So if the window is not visible, these actions will not be able to be triggered. But if we add the app prefix, that means that it doesn't matter what window we're currently seeing. If the application is running, then that action is attached to the application and can be triggered. So let's change this. When the rock paper, change it to control P. Scissors, change it to control S. Doesn't really matter because we're not saving any files. So I guess it's not that bad to overwrite control S because in most cases, you would want that to be for saving a file. And here in retry, well, let's just say control P. Oh yeah, I think I missed the null parameter here. Okay, <laughs> we forgot here. Action name when the replay. Sometimes I get distracted, so excuse me. And it worked. We know that it worked because we cannot activate any of these buttons, and that is because we haven't set an event for what happens when these buttons get triggered. We're going to define that in our window.c file because the event is attached to the window, not to the application. So if you've been looking at this, you know that we get an error here, that this label does not exist, and that is because, well, we removed it in the beginning of the video, <laughs> so it makes sense. To make up for the lack of classes, we're gonna use a struct. If you don't know what a struct is, it's a data structure. It's kind of like a class, but it only stores data. It does not store methods or something more complex. It just stores variables and that's it. We're going to give it a couple of widgets. First, we want to give it the await a status page of results page because we're going to manipulate it via code. And here, just change the label to results page. Do the same thing for the leaflet. And this is where you should put your init code when the window is initialized. Here, we're going to register an action. But because we have a lot of actions, I think it's better to make a method to just reuse that code and just register actions in one line. So say static void register action. Remember that because C is a procedural language, the order of your declarations do matter. So we have to declare it before the window.init method. So we're gonna pass a dual window, a pointer of dual window self, which is basically our current instance, a pointer of gchar, that is the action name, 
and a G callback that is basically the handler, the method that is going to be executed when this action is activated. I get this code from the docs. So we're gonna declare a G simple action called just action here that is going to be a new instance of G simple action. Let's pass the action name as parameter and parameter type we're gonna pass null because our signal does not pass any parameters. G signal connect swapped. Now here is where I got a match that I had an issue. I didn't really know what the difference between G signal connect and G signal connect swapped was. And it does matter a lot. So first of all, let's pass our action. Then the name of the action signal is activate. The C handler is basically just handler and the data is self. So to this handler, we're gonna pass self. Now the difference between G signal connect and G signal connect swapped is that as the name suggests, these two parameters, this one and this one, are swapped, which you could say that it's such a insignificant thing, but it does matter because if we want to pass our dual window instance then we have to make this the first parameter because if we don't swap it then it's going to pass this action and when we want to access any widget from our window it's going to give us an error because it's not a window it's an action so for that we have to use the g signal connect swapped to pass first our data that is the dual window and then our action it does matter <laughs> so and finally let's go here and add g action map add action g action map self so we're gonna pass our window as the g action map which makes sense because the actions are attached to our window we have to cast this as g action and there's a reusable method so now to register all actions we just have to call that method register action name of the action rock here do not use the prefix never going to trigger the the action if you do that and here we have to pass the g callback first we have to declare the g callback so static void on rock picked and let's pass a dual window here static void on paper picked and do something with this dual window instance static void on scissors picked dual window and well let's pass it again like this here we have our callbacks so now let's just say g callback on rock picked change this to paper and this to on paper picked scissors on scissors picked replay on replay activated and we can add something like gprint picked scissors and now if we go to our window picked rocked picked paper picked scissors and you can try with Control R, Control P, Control S, and they get triggered too. You can also try by selecting the button with Tab. If you select the button with Tab and press it with Enter, it also works. So here, I'm going to declare a couple of enums. Enums are a collection of integer variables. So enum options, rock paper scissors and this will be automatically set to 0 1 and 2 and you have to add a semicolon there enum results victory defeat or draw so these are the possible choices and the possible results great now here let's make a function to get the result static end because we're gonna return an integer get result takes as parameter player choice 
and the random choice. We're gonna generate a random choice with a random number generator. First of all, if player choice is equal to the random choice that means if you picked rock and the cpu did pick rock too or if both picked scissors then it's a draw but if it's not a draw if you picked different choices then let's add this if statement that it's a little bit convoluted not gonna lie probably programming horror material so if player choice is equal to rock and random choice is equal to scissors or player choice equals to paper <laughs> and random choice equals to rock or player choice equals to scissors and random choice equals to paper <laughs> return victory so basically if so we're checking for all of the three possible victory choices and if it's not like that else return defeat so finally let's add another method static void show result show result let's pass a dual window and let's pass our choice so instead of this we're going to replace it with show result self and scissors and we're going to do the same thing for the other ones show result self paper show result self rock and here in show result let's generate a random number now this is thanks to glyph so int random choice equals to g random int so the range for our random integer is going to be zero and then scissors that is the maximum value plus one because otherwise you would only have like two choices now here comes the interesting part so at wait a leaflet set visible child and let's pass our leaflet from the window as parameter and also let's pass our results page but first i forgot we have to convert it to gtk widget and result equals to our previous method get result and let's pass our choice and let's pass our random choice so it's going to execute this code and will get us the result that is one of these if random choice equals to rock we're gonna show a respective icon to the choice of the computer so if the computer chose a rock in the results page we're gonna show the rock at data status page dot search icon name and let's pass the results page so we're gonna set the icon of the results page to just rock and we're gonna do the same thing for the other choices And here in replay button, if a wait a leaflet dot get visible child equals to self results page, and then basically if it is showing the results page, then set the visible child again to the home page. And here I have a typo. At wait a leaflet set visible child home page. I forgot to add the home page here. Wait as that is page, home page, like this. Wait a second. I think we have to cast that. So we have to cast it as GTK widget. Now it works. Now rock, it's a draw. Paper, you won because they chose rock. 
it's a draw because we both chose scissors and uh, for, I forgot something here. Yeah, the style of the replay button and also I think I forgot an Oida clamp. Okay, now let's set the style class name equals to pill and also class name equals to suggested action. Now it should look like blue and rounded. Like this. Oh, and we also forgot to add another property here. H align center. Now this is how it looks. And we can just play again. And also we can just use the back button on our mouse or gestures and a touchpad. But well, um, so that's it. If we go to about dual, well, we have the credits, the, the, the legal and that stuff. Uh, but I'm going to show you some final things. For example, the application icon is this one. For this, I used app icon preview. So you just go here, new app icon, reverse notation name of your app, the, the location, and it will give you this template that you can edit with Inkscape. This is the maximum size for an icon. And most of the times you want to just give a very flat look. Again, try to use the GNOME color palette. All of these colors are from the color palette. So you have here the rock, paper and scissors. Only try to use like gradients to give shininess to something that is mainly with uh, metallic objects. So here you can see a little bit of gradient and here too you can see a little bit of gradient. For the symbolic icon, here you have some examples, but try to have strokes of at least one pixel of, of size. So here you have a little bit more than one pixel and same goes for these ones. You can set it from one to two pixels. So this is a little bit between. The high color icon is the one that we will be shown in the user interface normally. And the symbolic icon is like this one. So if we open our app icon with this application, it will give us a very good example of how it would look like with light theme, dark theme, and compared with other apps at different sizes. So make sure that it looks good. And here you can export it to regular, nightly. Well, it tries to generate a nightly version, doesn't always work fine. And you have to go to data, icons, high color, scalable apps, and this one, overwrite it. Well, I don't have any nightly version, so I'm not gonna do that. Now go to symbolic, and this one, and that's search. Now go to your app, go here to, well, I recommend you to clean the project here to export. This will generate a flat pack, then you can then install and here we have our application. 